Hello everyone and welcome to this interesting session on a priori algorithm. Now many of us have visited retail shops such as Walmart or Target for our household needs. Or let's say that we are planning to buy the new iPhone from Target. What we would typically do is search for the model by visiting the mobile section of the store and then select the product and head towards the billing counter. But in today's world, the goal of the organization is to increase the revenue. Can this be done by just pitching one product at a time to the customer? Now the answer to this is clearly no. Hence, organization began mining data relating to frequently bought items. So market basket analysis is one of the key techniques used by large retailers to uncover associations between items. Now examples could be the customers who purchase bread have a 60% likelihood to also purchase jam. Customers who purchase laptops are more likely to purchase laptop bags as well. They try to find out associations between different items and products that can be sold together, which gives assisting in the right product placement. Typically, it figures out what products are being bought together and organizations can place products in a similar manner. For example, people who buy bread also tend to buy butter, right? And the marketing team at retail stores should target customers who buy bread and butter and provide an offer to them so that they buy a third item, suppose eggs. So if a customer buys bread and butter and sees a discount offer on eggs, he will be encouraged to spend more and buy the eggs. And this is what market basket analysis is all about. This is what we are going to talk about in this session, which is association rule miling and the a priori algorithm. Now, association rule can be thought of as an if then relationship. Just to elaborate on that, we have come up with a rule. Suppose if an item A is being bought by the customer, then the chances of item B being picked by the customer too under the same transaction ID is found out. You need to understand here that it's not a casualty, rather, it's a co occurrence pattern that comes to the force. Now, there are two elements to this rule. First is the if and second is the then. Now if is also known as antecedent. This is an item or a group of items that are typically found in the item set. And the later one is called the consequent. This comes along as an item with an antecedent group or the group of antecedents a purchase. Now if you look at the image here A arrow B, it means that if a person buys an item A, then he will also buy an item B or he will most probably buy an item B. Now the simple example that I gave you about the bread and butter and the eggs is just a small example. But what if you have thousands and thousands of items? If you go to any professional data scientist with that data, you can just imagine how much of profit you can make if the data scientist provides you with the right examples and the right placement of the items which you can do. And you can get a lot of insights. That is why association rule mining is a very good algorithm which helps the business make profit. So let's see how this algorithm works. So association rule mining is all about building the rules. And we have just seen one rule that if you buy A, then there's a slight possibility or there's a chance that you might buy B also. This type of a relationship in which we can find the relationship between these two items is known as single cardinality. But what if the customer who bought A and B also wants to buy C? Or if a customer who bought A, B and C also wants to buy D, then in these cases the cardinality usually increases and we can have a lot of combination around these data. And if you have around 10,000 or more than 10,000 data or items, just imagine how many rules you're going to create for each product. That is why association rule mining has such measures so that we do not end up creating tens of thousands of rules. Now that is where the a priori algorithm comes in. But before we get into the a priori algorithm, let's understand what's the maths behind it. Now there are three types of matrices which help to measure the association. We have support, confidence and lift. So support is the frequency of item A or the combination of item A or B. It's basically the frequency of the items which we have bought and what are the combination of the frequency of the item we have bought. So with this what we can do is filter out the items which have been bought less frequently. This is one of the measures which is support. Now what confidence tells us. 
So confidence gives us how often the items A and B occur together given the number of times A occur. Now this also helps us solve a lot of other problems because if somebody is buying A and B together and not buying C, we can just rule out C at that point of time. So this solves another problem is that we obviously do not need to analyze the products which people just buy barely. So what we can do is according to the sales, we can define our minimum support and confidence. And when you have set these values, we can put these values in the algorithm and we can filter out the data and we can create different rules. And suppose even after filtering, you have like 5,000 rules and for every item we create these 5000 rules so that's practically impossible so for that we need the third calculation which is the lift so lift is basically the strength of any rule now let's have a look at the denominator of the formula given here and if you see here we have the independent support values of a and b so this gives us the independent occurrence probability of a and b and obviously there's a lot of difference between the random occurrence and association and if the denominator of the lift is more what it means is that the occurrence of randomness is more rather than the occurrence because of any association so lift is the final verdict where we know whether we have to spend time on this particular rule what we have got here or not now let's have a look at a simple example of association rule mining so suppose we have a set of items A, B, C, D, and E and a set of transactions T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5. And as you can see here, we have the transactions T1 in which we have A, B, C, T2, A, C, D, T3, B, C, D, T4, A, D, E, and T5, B, C, E. Now what we generally do is create some rules or association rules such as A gives T or C gives A, A gives C, B and C gives A. What this basically means is that if a person buys A, then he's most likely to buy D. And if a person buys C, then he's most likely to buy A. And if you have a look at the last one, if a person buys B and C, he's most likely to buy the item A as well. Now, if we calculate the support, confidence, and lift using these rules, as you can see here in the table, we have the rule and the support, confidence, and the lift values. Now, let's discuss about A priority. So a priori algorithm uses the frequent item sets to generate the association rule and it is based on the concept that a subset of a frequent item set must also be a frequent item set itself. Now this raises the question what exactly is a frequent item set. So a frequent item set is an item set whose support value is greater than the threshold value. Now just now we discussed that the marketing team according to the sales have a minimum threshold value for the confidence as well as the support so frequent item set is that item set whose support value is greater than the threshold value already specified for example if a and b is a frequent item set then a and b should also be frequent item sets individually now let's consider the following transaction to make the things a little easier so suppose we have transactions one two three four five and these items are there so T1 has 1, 3, and 4, T2 has 2, 3, and 5, T3 has 1, 2, 3, 5, T4, 2, 5, and T5, 1, 3, and 5. Now the first step is to build a list of item sets of size 1 by using this transactional data. And one thing to note here is that the minimum support count which is given here is 2. Let's suppose it's 2. So the first step is to create item sets of size 1 and calculate their support values. So as you can see here, we have the table C1 in which we have the item sets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the support values. If you remember the formula of support, it was frequency divided by the total number of occurrence. So as you can see here, for the item set 1, the support is 3. As you can see here, the item set 1 appears in T1, T3 and T5. So as you can see, its frequency is 1, 2 and 3. Now as you can see here, the item set 4 has a support of 1 as it occurs only once in transaction 1 but the minimum support value is 2 that's why it's going to be eliminated so we have the final table which is the table f1 in which we have the item sets 1 2 3 and 5 and we have the support values 3 3 4 and 4 now the next step is to create item sets of size 2 and calculate their support values now all the combination of the item sets in the f1 which is the final table in which you discarded the four 
are going to be used for this iteration. So we get the table C2. So as you can see here, we have 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 5, 2, 3, 2, 5, and 3, 5. Now, if you calculate the support here again, we can see that the item set 1, 2 has a support of 1, which is again less than the specified threshold. So we're going to discard that. So if we have a look at the table F2, we have 1, 3, 1, 5, 2, 3, 2, 5, and 3, 5. Again, we're going to move forward and create the item set of size 3 and calculate the support values. Now, all the combinations are going to be used from the item set F2 for this particular iterations. Now, before calculating support values, let's perform pruning on the data set. Now, what is pruning? Now, after the combinations are being made, we divide C3 item sets to check if there is another subset whose support is less than the minimum support value. That is what frequent item set means. So if you have a look here, the item sets we have is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3 for the first one. Because as you can see here, if we have a look at the subsets of 1, 2, 3, we have 1, 2 as well. So we are going to discard this whole item set. Same goes for the second one. We have 1, 2, 5. We have 1, 2 in that, which was discarded in the previous set or the previous step. That's why we're going to discard that also which leaves us with only two factors, which is 135 item set and the 235. And the support for this is 2 and 2 as well. Now, if we create the table C4 using four elements, we're going to have only one item set, which is 1, 2, 3, and 5. And if we have a look at the table here, the transaction table, 1, 2, 3, and 5 appears only one. So the support is one. And since C4, the support of the whole table C4 is less than 2. So we're going to stop here and return to the previous item set that is C3. So the frequent item sets are 1, 3, 5, and 2, 3, 5. Now let's assume our minimum confidence value is 60%. For that, we're going to generate all the non empty subsets for each frequent item set. Now for i equals 1, 3, 5, which is the item set, we get the subset 1, 3, 1, 5. 3, 5, 1, 3, and 5. Similarly, for 2, 3, 5, we get 2, 3, 2, 5, 3, 5, 2, 3, and 5. Now, this rule states that for every subset S of i, the output of the rule gives something like S gives i to S. That implies S recommends i of S. And this is only possible if the support of i divided by the support of S is greater than or equal to the minimum confidence value. Now, applying these rules to the item set of F3, we get rule 1, which is 1, 3 gives 1, 3, 5, and 1, 3. It means 1 and 3 gives 5. So the confidence is equal to the support of 1, 3, 5 divided by the support of 1, 3. That equals 2 by 3, which is 66%, and which is greater than the 60%. So the rule 1 is selected. Now, if we come to rule 2, which is 1, 5, it gives 1, 3, 5, and 1, 5. It means if we have 1 and 5, it implies we're also going to have 3. Now, if we calculate the confidence of this one, we're going to have support 1, 3, 5 divided by support 1, 5, which gives us 100%, which means rule 2 is selected as well. But again, if we have a look at rule 5 and rule 6 over here, Similarly, if it select 3 gives 1, 3, 5, and 3, it means if we have 3, we also get 1 and 5. So the confidence for this comes at 50%, which is less than the given 60% target. So we're going to reject this rule. And same goes for the rule number 6. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that although the rule 1 and rule 5 look a lot similar, they are not. So it really depends what's on the left hand side of the arrow and what's on the right hand side of the arrow. It's the if then possibility. I'm sure you guys can understand what exactly these rules are and how to proceed with these rules. So let's see how we can implement the same in Python, right? So for that, what I'm going to do is create a new Python file and I'm going to use the Jupyter Notebook. You are free to use any sort of ID. I'm going to name it as a priori. So the first thing what we're going to do is we'll be using the online transactional data of a retail store for generating association rules. So firstly, what we need to do is get the pandas and ml extend libraries imported and read the file. 
so as you can see here we are using the online retail dot xlss format file and from ml extend we're going to import a priori and association rules it all comes under ml extend so as you can see here we have the invoice the stock code the description the quantity the invoice data unit price customer id and the country now next in this step what we're going to do is do data cleanup which includes removing the spaces from some of the descriptions and drop the rows that do not have invoice numbers and remove the credit card transactions because that is of no use to us so as you can see here the output in which we have like 532000 rows with eight columns so after the cleanup we need to consolidate the items into one transaction per row with each product for the sake of keeping the data set small we are only looking at the sales for france so as you can see here we have excluded all the other sales we are just looking at the sales for france now there are a lot of zeros in the data but we also need to make sure any positive values are converted to one and anything less than zero is set to zero so as you can see here we have still 392 rows we're going to encode it and see check again now that you have structured the data properly in this step what we're going to do is generate frequent item sets that have support at least seven percent now this number is chosen so that you can get close enough and generate the rules with the corresponding support confidence and lift So guys, as you can see here, the minimum support is 0.7. Now, what if we add another constraint on the rules, such as the lift is greater than six and the confidence is greater than 0.8? So as you can see here, we have the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the association rule, which is the antecedent and the consequence. We have the support, we have the confidence, the lift, the leverage, and the conviction. So guys, that's it for this session. That is how you create association rules using the a priori algorithm, which helps a lot in the marketing business. It runs on the principle of market basket analysis, which is exactly what big companies like Walmart, you have Reliance and Target do. Even IKEA does it. And I hope you got to know what exactly is association rule mining, what is lift, confidence, and support, and how to create association rules. And if you have any queries, feel free to mention it in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!